Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Thanks for taking the time to check this out. Today we are looking at my sim rig. Actually, my sim rig. I wanted to share it with you guys. It's been a bit of a journey with me and sim racing. So this is going to be pretty rapid fire. So uh, hang on to your hats, let's just go through this. It should be noted that I built this rig to be cost effective. You know, I didn't, I didn't have to have the best of everything. Um, I just really wanted the average middle of the road. For me, this is middle of the middle of the road performance. Something that's just heaps of fun and something that I can just jump in, enjoy. It feels real enough for my senses. I've driven a few track days and this is pretty good. You know, it's pr as close as sort of I'm going to get. I don't think I'm going to go any further with it. Um, the screens might change, but outside of that, uh, there won't be too much else done to it. So, And I also tried to do it on the cheap. Because I don't believe in spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars if you don't have to. You know, if you don't have to. I try to find the most cost-effective ways of doing things. And uh, you might get a few tips on some things that you can um, look at for yourself. So, And if so, I might put some links underneath just to all the equipment that I use. Feel free to have a look at those. Um, and yeah, if you want to purchase something, feel free to do that. So, let's get into it guys. Let's go. So this is a sim rig, uh, it's built out of aluminium 80, 80 by 80 and 80 by 20 I believe it is, so there's some big thick pieces there and you'll see that what we've got is, we've got a 49 inch monitor, uh, we'll pause it there, we've got a 49 inch monitor which is an AOC monitor, um, I get the actual model, uh, it's the 165 hertz one, uh, one millisecond refresh and it's an 1800r curve so not the huge curve like the samsung um i felt like th th this was my mindset and i don't know if this is correct but what i did was i measured my car windscreen and i measured the the, the width of it and then i looked at the curve and the curve was nowhere near a thousand r and what i thought to myself was okay Maybe I'll buy a screen that's the same curvature as my windscreen. That was my idea. And what I didn't account for was that this monitor was the same width as my windscreen, but it it that didn't account for the side screen, the side windows. So down the track, if I do eventually... Uh, added two extra screens which i might do i might put two 27s on each side um, or i might just go three 32s but it kind of feels real when you're driving down um when you're driving on the on the racetrack the cars almost look the same size as they do in real life and that was one thing that built the immersion was like i feel like i'm driving on the track with real cars because they look like real size cars not like toys uh, so, yeah, anyway, that was my mindset, and I'm pretty happy with the monitor, to be honest. Because I'm limited for space, uh, it works quite well. So that's a 49-inch AOC Aegon 165 millisecond cabin. It's pretty good. Uh, and you'll also see, so up the top on the monitor there, we've got the C920. That's what I've been using for streaming when I'm driving. Um I've thought about getting a better camera, that may happen, but not right now. We'll just keep working with that for now. And probably better lighting is what I need, not so much a better camera. And you can see my steering wheel there, which we'll go over soon. But we'll see my little um, keyboard tray there. This is interesting. And just ignore the the uh, Ollie there, sitting, sitting on the seat, my little cat. Um, he's hanging out today. He loves the seat. But you see my little tray there, my little keyboard and mouse tray and the remote control to the monitor. Um, which is recommended for this monitor, by the way, because the on-screen display is horrendous to try and navigate with the buttons on the on the actual monitor. So you, the remote is a saviour. But you'll see that I've actually rigged up a um, keyboard and mouse tray and this is off a another rig that i bought before 
I ventured into our aluminium profile rigs. I've been through a few different variants and this come off that and I've jerry-rigged it up to sit on this rig and it's solid. It's rock solid and it's pretty cool because that's a hard thing to try and replicate is the keyboard and monitor mount for a keyboard and mouse tray and uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. You'll see that my monitor mount is separate. Uh, I ended up making it separate. It was all built in at one stage and then I decided to move it away and move it separate. More flexibility when you have your monitor uh, mount separate from the actual rig. But yeah, uh, that, that's what I decided to do. Have a look at the size of those solid beams. <laughs> those solid beams for the sides. This is a, this is a heavy duty rig. Uh, so have a look at the pedals there. They're the SRP pedals with uh, the spring kit, with the spring accessory kit. You need that spring accessory kit if you're going to buy these pedals. I like them a lot. A lot of people think they're a little bit, you know, they feel a little bit amateur, but not for me. I reckon they feel really good. Um, is there better pedals out there? Yes, there is. Um, but I wanted to stick with the whole Moses set because I wanted just one lot of software to run as much as I possibly could. I've put a little um, foam cover on there just to sort of protect my heels because uh, that's a solid metal plate. And uh, yeah, I've moved the pedals apart a little bit. So I don't usually clutch too often, uh, but I like to have as much space between my knees as possible. So I'm not awkwardly pushing on the brake and not using my quad muscle, uh, not using my ankle. Just I'm, I'm using my whole leg, my whole quad muscle to push the pedal down, the brake pedal down in more of a straight plane instead of an angle plane if that makes any sense but um yeah so they're, they're, they're the srp pedals i had to get a bit inventive with my do-it-yourself uh aluminium profile rig but they look good they feel good so that's good so you'll see here we've got a different sort of selection of um gear knob and the moser handbrake so we've got the moser handbrake which i really do like value for money i mean it's just a handbrake but it feels good underhand can change the spring in it if you, if you want to and stiffen it up but yeah I've, I've loved that thing that thing's been absolutely great especially for wrc and uh dirt rally yeah heaps of fun heaps of fun and then you'll see next to that we've got a weird looking shifter and uh this one was an ebay special and you can buy them on ebay they're relatively cheap i think i paid about 90 dollars australian and it had some really good reviews and there's not too many shifters out there, which are H pattern, manual, uh, seven speed, I think it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, six speed. And you can put that little plastic white bit in the middle there. You can put that um, into, you just slide it into that slot and then you have a sequential shifter, which is awesome. You pay a hell of a lot of money for that sort of ad adaptability and very hard to find that too and uh, 80 bucks on ebay and it hasn't let me down it's been going for almost a year and a half now and i'm not too physical on the shifts but yeah sits in the right spot feels good in the shifts uh feels very mechanical so pretty cool pretty pretty good value and you'll also there, see there i do have a moza cs wheel uh this was the wheel that i originally bought with my moza kit and awesome for rally great for rally it is a heavy wheel it's probably the only downside is it is heavy it's 330 mil so it's a pretty big wheel but you know what it's built like a tank of this thing and i love that it's quality and the qr is amazing like the rest of the qrs so yeah awesome for rally fantastic and cheap too i think it was 289 american or something uh which is pretty damn good so got the quest 2 there i still use that pretty often uh i use cooler master headphones uh, they work pretty well my seat i bought off facebook marketplace i believe it was for 80 dollars. it was like pretty much brand new condition and it's a saas i think it's some type of australian brand i'm not too sure maybe a cheap seat but it is reclinable which i'd recommend a solid reclinable seat uh, fixed ones are okay if if you just want to be solid in the same position all the time but i've had my fair share of back issues so i want to be comfortable and i want to be able to 
adjust it if I need to. And this thing's been really good so far, really good. It's got a little bit of a squash in the material there from where I push my hand. But um, 80 bucks, man, 80 bucks for a seat, you cannot go wrong. You can't go wrong. And even the cats love it. So um, happy days. This is an interesting design, and this is something that I sort of jerry-rigged up myself, if you can see. So we've got our seat belts attached there, bolted into the rig. And you'll see that... Um, what we have is a uh, cup holders. We've got cup holders with an Allen key sort of holder. And what that actually is, is that's out of a off a mechanics toolbox. Um, it is a, uh, it's a, it's a drink holder and you can hold pens or tools, tools on in, in here. And I, I got it off my toolbox and um, hooked it up. It's actually magnetized. And yeah, so I can have my Allen key sitting right there, or picks, or 10 mils. And then you'll see this big plate underneath here that holds the caster wheels on. And this all come with my uh, sim rig. Well, it wasn't even a sim rig. I built this thing. There's a bit of a story to this, but I'll make it quick. I bought this whole aluminium. Uh, it was like a 3D printer type lift hoist type thing. And it didn't work. The guy was just wanting to get rid of it. He was selling it for like, I think it was $170. And he had two of them. And it was a whole bulk load of this aluminium profile. And I saw it on Facebook Marketplace. And I was like, I'm going to go take my ute, take my trailer, go down and pick this up. Have a look, see how much. It almost looked like a sim rig. And I'll put a picture up of what it looked like when it started. And I've got a video of sort of the half build of building it. Um, but it had everything that I needed to build virtually a full sim rig, full aluminium profile sim rig, and monitor stand for 175 Australian dollars, which is like, I don't know, I think it's about $120 American. It's insane value. And I got these big plates and caster wheels all included and these rubber pads you're about to see, this was all included. It was amazing. So if we have a bit of a look here, all these bolts, everything was all included. These rubber pads, so I don't kick me kick me feet on it, um, hit me shins on it. Those rubber pads come included as well, which was amazing. And all I really had to buy was the um, L pieces there. And that was pretty much it. All, all I had to do was just cut it to size. And most of these pieces were already the right size. It was amazing. So you'll see here, it's a little bit dark, but um, what I have is the Moser R9. And this is the V1, the version 1. I purchased this really early on in Moser's product line. And it was a bit of a risk at the time because I was kind of looking towards Fanatec. But Fanatec had so many issues with delivery. Things were taking forever and they weren't arriving on time. And uh, I heard some horror stories about customer service and the QRs were average for their steering wheels. And I was like, oh, Moza, everyone was saying how good the QRs are. And there were some pretty good reviews when the, when, the, when the R9 V1 come out. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to risk it and I'm going to do it. And I've been super happy with it. I'll be honest. Like, I... I can't fault it. I was a bit concerned about the Bluetooth connectivity with the steering wheels, which they're now moving away from. But credit to them, they haven't stopped anyone from using Bluetooth wheels. Some wheels now are not, are not able to be used, but it doesn't make any difference to me. Like I, I have the two wheels that I'm probably going to have for a very long time, so I won't really need to update unless something goes wrong. But had no problems in the last two years, so I've uh, been really, really happy with it. And then bolted to that is the Moza KS wheel, and I absolutely love this wheel as well. I wanted to get a wheel for, obviously, GT racing, F1 racing. Yeah, and this thing is lightweight. I find it comfortable. I don't have huge hands, which is good because I heard if you have big, big hands, you can hit your... When you're changing gears, you can flick the paddle switches and hit yourself in the hands with them, but I don't have any of those problems. And it's comfortable as, and it has all the buttons, all the switches, LEDs, really good, really good knobs there, encoders, 
even really good encoders on the on the thumbs up the top there, which you can barely see, but it has every adjustment that I would need. And it's comfortable. I can race for hours with it with no issues. And it's been super reliable, super lightweight, and it feels like you're driving a uh, F1 car or a, G a GT car. So yeah, outside of that, the only other couple of things to mention is I do have... Um, some butt kickers or some um, Dayton base shakers. I got one under my seat, which works really well. It's cable tied under my seat, um, and also another one under the pedals, which I've got to adjust a little bit. And uh, yeah, that is what it looks like when it's um, when it's all there and all up and running. So, right, guys. So if you do have any questions about the rig, um, if you want to ask me about how I've set it up or certain things. Uh, feel free to ask away throw some questions in the comments i'll do my best to get back to everyone what we might do now is jump on in and have a bit of a race in a minute and i'll show you guys what it's like to uh sit there and drive I hope you guys enjoyed this little introduction to my sim rig and i hope to see you guys in some more streams and uh jumping in the comments in my youtube video soon and yeah maybe we could have a race together that sounds like fun so hope you guys enjoy it have a great night peace out